So everyone, I want to just take a quick minute before we get into the, today's episode. So as you might notice, if you are watching this via YouTube, if not, you're streaming this via Spotify, Apple podcast, wherever you get your favorite podcast, you might notice that it's just going to be me today. And I'm going to tell you why that is. From time to time on this show, I, I want to give my perspective. Over the last year, I've been having people on, talking about things that are going on, and I really haven't had the chance to give my perspective on my uh, views. Now, I've had the ability to go on some other shows, uh, whether it be the Forgotten Corner podcast, whether it be Sober Not Sane podcast, whether it be the uh, Unbreakable with Nate Pike podcast. I've had the ability to go on some of these shows and talk about my story and talk about me, but it's given me a little bit of a pick me up to say, you know what? I, I want to do that on my show. I'm going to sit here, talk to the camera, talk to the microphone and tell you my opinions on certain things that are coming up. Now, this isn't going to be a regular thing once a month. It's going to be a off one off thing from time to time. I might just try to fill an episode and it's just going to be me where I think there's an important discussion to have and I want to give my unique take on it. So please bear with us over the next 30 minutes to 45 minutes where I'm going to try to digest certain topics. And today's topic is quite an interesting one. So we'll be right back after the introduction and we'll be talking about it. Welcome back to another great edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am your host, Chris Brown, and we are talking today leadership. Leadership, leadership, leadership. Over the next few minutes, over the next half hour, we're going to be talking about the upcoming leadership races that the uh, country is being pushed into because of political leaders stepping down from their position and letting new, fresh voices come into play. Federally, there's a few. Provincially, there is a lot. And we often always overlook uh, the provincial ones. So I want to take a special moment and talk about some of those provincial ones later. But I want to also talk about the federal ones. And there's three that I've been able to find out. One being the Conservative Party of Canada. Two being the Green Party of Canada. And the third is the Maverick Party, Western uh, Canada's uh, party. Uh, led by the Honorable Jay Hill. The former uh, leader of the party was the Honorable Jay Hill. He was the interim leader until after the election where he stepped down and the party has been put into a leadership race. Uh, the Conservative Party with Aaron O'Toole, he stepped down after his party, his caucus I should say, voted him out. Uh, there was some trouble brewing after the uh, Freedom Convoy got to Ottawa and after a day, they turfed him in a substantial vote internally, caucus-wise. The other is Anime Paul with the Green Party. Now, Anime Paul's time as the Green Party leader has been turbulent, to say the least. She did not get a proper footing after the leadership election, and she was fighting an uphill battle the entire time. So I'm going to be talking about some of those because there are some candidates who have already put their name forward. There are some candidates who are anticipated to get in, but I'm going to look into those a little bit deeper. Now, provincially is where I'm going to probably be focusing most of my time today on, and that is that the reason behind that is because we often forget that those provincial races do matter. Uh, during the municipal campaign, I, I always said that while it's great to talk about the mayor, you always have to look at the races underneath. And while we want to stick to what is happening federally, provincially sometimes makes a difference because provincial does dictate what happens federally. So we have the liberals in kind of turmoil in the Atlantic provinces. And I say turmoil in the nicest way possible because the Liberals in New Brunswick, the Liberals in Nova Scotia are both going through some very important leadership races because they're both leaders of the opposition. 
So we're going to be focusing on that a little bit. Uh, in Nova Scotia as well, the uh, NDP are going through a leadership race. Their long-term uh, leader, Gary Burrell, has announced that he is stepping down. So we're going to be talking about that for a bit. Uh, here in Alberta, talking about Liberals again, but the Alberta Liberals, after David Kahn stepped down, have been kind of rudderless because they haven't had a true permanent leader and we're still waiting for those rules and results to come, uh, rules uh, and uh, regulations to come out about how the leadership race is going to happen. They've given some tidbits about it's going to happen this year. Well, I hope it happens this year because, well, we have a provincial election in 2023. And if they don't have a leader, then they're not going to potentially even put up a good fight. And for the party that kind of formed this province, you think they'd be a little bit more in shape about getting things together and getting the leadership raring to go. The other ones that I want to talk about is uh, in Newfoundland and Labrador, the progressive conservatives under Chess Crosby didn't do as well as they expected in the last provincial election, and they actually lost a seat. And the, that seat that they lost was Chess Crosby, the leader of the progressive conservatives in Newfoundland and Labrador. So he's announced his resignation. The Liberals there have a majority government. We are still in the unknown of where the Progressive Conservatives are going to hold their leadership race, when, who's going to run. So it's going to be interesting. We'll be talking about that as well. And the other two I want to talk about is PEI, the party that doesn't hold any seats in the legislature there, uh, the NDP. The NDP is actually going through a leadership race. They did hold a few seats way back when, but they haven't really recently. So we're going to be talking about that. And then closer back to home, just recently, like literally, literally last week, Ryan Miley, the leader of the official opposition, leader of the Saskatchewan NDP, announced his resignation after a disastrous showing in the Athabasca by-election where they saw the NDP lose a seat that they have not lost since 1995 when Bucky Belanger took the seat for the party and that well took the seat for the liberals and then floor crossed to the NDP in 1998 three three years later when the liberals and the progressive conservatives joined to become the Saskatchewan party now this is a lot to cover and it's just going to be me now, I know what you're saying, probably, oh, you're actually an uh, interview-based show, so how can you do this by yourself? Let's see if I can do it. Let's see if I can actually talk for a long period of time about politics and the state of the parties that are currently going through leadership races. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to digesting a little bit about it. But I, I do want to say up front, I might screw this up from time to time but i will try my best to get the facts right and if i don't please call me out on it message me comment below give me some feedback because i do want people to know that i'm willing to take uh, constructive criticism so without further ado we will be back after this quick commercial break and we'll be talking about the federal leaderships first and then we will be going into some preferred provinces so talk to you soon We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. So I want to start off with talking about the Conservative Party of Canada. Leader Aaron O'Toole on February 2nd was turf from caucus, and he released a statement saying that he was stepping down as the leader of the Her Highness's royal uh, official opposition, and he was going to ask the party to start the leadership process. And he gave this, and I'm not going to play the whole thing because it's about eight minutes and really, well, I could fill up time, but I really don't want to. I'm just going to play the first like two minutes of it. But here's what he said about stepping down and serving as leader of the official opposition during that time. This afternoon, I stepped down as leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition and leader of the Conservative Party of Canada following a Reform Act vote in our caucus. It was an honour of a lifetime to lead the party of Sir John A. Macdonald and Confederation, 
of Robert Borden and Vimy Ridge, of John Diefenbaker and the Bill of Rights, of Brian Mulroney leading the world on ending apartheid, and of Stephen Harper and his principled leadership on the world stage. Ours is the party of Canada's first female prime minister and Canada's first black cabinet minister. Our party founded this great nation. I believe it can and should lead Canada out of these troubling times for our country. When Aaron O'Toole stepped down, there was a sense that the party was moving from more of a centrist party where he was trying to take them to more of a populist party that the party was used to under Stephen Harper, under Aaron Dushier. Now, this is big because if the official opposition goes through a leadership race, this gives the governing party and governing liberals at this chance and Justin Trudeau kind of a free reign because the conservatives i'm assuming will not want to take down the governing liberals and force an election but i could be wrong candace bergen the interim leader was chosen after aaron o'toole was turf from by caucus candace bergen's been doing well we have seen poll after poll and i know you should never believe polls you've seen polls that show that the party's actually increasing support now if you digest into those polls the support is coming from Alberta and saskatchewan where they traditionally win all but a few seats so i wouldn't take into uh, put what you see in the polls with too i, I wouldn't hold it to too uh, high of standard because it all depends on the regional breakdown and right now the regional breakdown shows that the party is very strong at west but in ontario and quebec where the party needs to win they aren't. Few days after, without any mention of leadership rules, leadership dates, leadership costs, uh, the MP for Carleton, Pierre Polivare, announced that he was running via social media at a, in a late night video posted to his social media feed. This is this was a very shocking move from him because. If you remember back in 2020, when he ran for the, when he was about to announce he was going to run for the leadership, he was expected to run. He had he had the ballroom lined up and then he sort of said the night before it was about to happen that he was stepping back. And the reason he was stepping back is because he had a young child. So the fact that he still has young children and he's putting his name forward tells me, and he's doing it so quickly, tells me that he's getting ahead of the people telling him not to, to give it to somebody else. But the party seems to be rallying around him. High profile people across this country are supporting him. We are seeing eight, as of recording this, eight MPs from Alberta come out and endorse Pierre Bolivar for the next leader of the Conservative Party of Canada. And we are seeing rumblings of potentially another leadership candidate coming into the fold probably in the next few weeks and that's former quebec premier john charay now john charay like pierre was about to announce in the 2020 election leadership election for the conservatives but something stopped him he had a video released the day he was about to uh, uh, announce that he was in and he was going to run but he stopped and he like backtracked and he said no i'm not going to run i have other priorities right now so this i i think what we are seeing in this conservative leadership race is we're seeing the leadership race that the party should have had in 2020 and i'm looking forward to it because i see uh, a true populist moment a message to, against the traditional conservative message of john charay against pierre polivier I don't expect many people to get into this leadership race because I think they want it over sooner rather than later. And they do not want it as divisive as the last two leadership elections have been with Aaron O'Toole beating Peter McKay with Andrew Scheer beating Maxine Bernier. So I think the conservatives are setting this part, this uh, leadership race up to be a two horse race. You might see another person get in, but I highly suspect that you will not see a crowded field as we have in the last few leadership races. Because you have to remember, in 2017, when Andrew Scheer won, there was 10, if not 13, if I'm not mistaken. But I do remember 10, because I think if you dropped off before the actual vote happened. And then in 2020, 
Aaron O'Toole beat out four other contenders with Leslie Lewis, Derek Sloan, and Peter McKay. While not as crowded, if it was a two-horse race, I think you would see a first ballot win and we would be able to move on. So I'm expecting the Conservative Party to be setting this up to be a two-horse race between uh, Pierre Paul Levere and John Charest. I could be wrong. I'd be happy to be wrong. I always like a good election. I think anyone who wants to run for the election should run for the election. So I'm holding out hope that the Conservatives are able to put on a good leadership race. And I hope it's not a coronation. I really hope it's not a coronation because if it is, I think it does detriment to the party because you need someone who is able to hold their own and be properly vetted. If you just randomly put up a candidate, talk to Michael Ignatieff, talk to Jim Prentice, you see what happens. They don't get tested in the new environment that they're in and they get destroyed in the follow up election. So maybe I'm wrong, but history has told me that if a party win, if a leader wins by coronation, they usually don't go on to win the next uh, election. I, Justin Trudeau had eight people running against him, and many thought that that was a, a, a ex, ex, excess. But he went on to win the next election because he had a field of candidates who threw things and the kitchen sink at him, even though they weren't able to dig up some scandals. But they were able to get him to understand that being a leader is completely different from being an MP in question period. So the leadership race hasn't been set. The rules haven't been set as of recording this. Uh, I hope the conservatives do take a little bit of time, maybe hold the leadership race in November, even December, let it run out for the year because I think the party needs to start fundraising. We saw uh, lousy numbers come out of the fourth quarter. And if the party wants to win in the next election, they need good resources and maybe taking a year, rebranding themselves, regrouping after the loss and trying to figure out how to win those coveted seats in Quebec and urban downtown Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver might be... Uh, beneficial in the long run to the party. Again, I'm just one person. I could be completely up creek without a paddle here, but this is how I'm seeing that the parties might need might need to play out the next few months, next year. And I hope, and I hope, and I hope, and I'll repeat this until the day I die, that the coronation of Pierre doesn't happen, and he does get some in the trench fighting against the ideas of what a conservative means because he needs to be able to tell the people of Canada, this is what I stand for. And to do that, you need to f uh, flesh it out with the people who are literally your backbenchers and your back supporters before you can go tell to Canadians what you support. So this is the Conservative Party. The state of the party, I think it's going to be strong. I think they have a good foundation. But if they do not smarten up they could potentially be seeing a uh, another few years in opposition under a new leader so i hope the party does hold a leadership race and i hope they hold a, a, a substantial one so that way the party can uh, recalibrate and canadians can learn who this next leader is and not just let it be a quick five minute leadership race where you don't learn who this person is so that's my take on the Conservative Party. We'll be right back uh, with the Green Party. The Green Party is next. We'll just talk about a little bit about their state of politics with the Green Party right now. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15-second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. Now, the next two are going to be a little back to back. So I'm going to try and do these quickly because I realized that we're already probably about 20 minutes into this. And I want to make sure that we get to all of the leadership races that have been called as of recording. Now, the next two I want to talk about and the first one I'll, I'll start with is the Green Party of Canada. Uh, after the last election, Anna Mae Paul, the leader of the Green Party, announced that she was leaving. She had she was done with uh, politics because of how bad the party had treated her. 
Uh, the, she stepped down in November, and an interim leader was chosen after a candidate search was uh, done. Uh, Amita Kutner, the uh, interim leader, has been put into place. They are uh, expected to lead the party until the next uh, leadership race. And again, with the cons like the Conservatives, the Greens have not set their rules. The issue is they have to set the rules by May of this year. Under their constitution, they have to set the rules and regulations and pricing and dates of the leadership race before May of this year. So that's six months after the party leader steps down, they have to have a leadership race kickoff. Now, and this is the caveat, the leadership race can be a year and a half. So they do not have to technically lead, uh, elect a leader until November of 2023. Now, the Green Party has been in uh, shambles since the 2020 Green Party leadership. I'm not saying they need to select a party leader tomorrow, but... They need, to, unlike the conservatives who have the funding, have the resources, have the actual, uh, the structure in place to lead a party to become government. If the Greens need, want to be taken serious, they need to have a leadership race now and they need a candidate that can unify the party and sort of bring it back to what it was when Elizabeth May was leader. Now, Elizabeth May, the MP for Sandwich Gulf Islands, has said that she does not want the party. She does not want the leadership anymore. She's done. She's over with it. And the other MP, uh, Kitchener Center MP Mike Morris, has said he doesn't want it either. So you have the two sitting M MPs who say, nope, we don't want the leadership. We are done with it. We want to focus on our constituents' work. We want to focus on what's going on in the, uh, the, the House of Commons. We do not want it. So this is going to be, a com again, a complete unknown person who's going to come out of the woodworks and potentially take this leadership. Now, there are some people who have expressed interest. One of our former guests, uh, Naomi Rankin, uh, Naomi, oh, this is going to be bad. The Green Party leader of Saskatchewan has said that she is potentially thinking about uh, running. Uh, Demetrius, uh, the the runner-up to Anime Paul in the 2020 leadership race, has said he is potentially thinking about it. There is speculation that Paul Manley, former Lady Smith and Nanaimo uh, MP for the Greens, is thinking about it as well after he took himself out of contention for the interim position because if you're interim leader you cannot run for permanent leader so those are the three technical people who have put their name forward there is another lady uh a former green candidate in the last election who announced in the middle in the middle <laughs> that's right the middle of the last provincial uh, the last federal election september 5th so elections called august 16th election is held supposed to be held september 20th in the middle september 5th she talks to ctv and says anime paul is a disgrace and i'm going to run for the leadership of the party after the next election uh writings on the wall for your uh leadership when <laughs> you have candidates who are running under you saying i'm going to run for the leadership in the midst of an election now during the 2020 leadership race for the Greens, I told people that I was going to sit down with all the candidates I could of the of the Green Party leadership. I ended up sitting down with all of them. My concern now is the uh, lady from Quebec who, I, 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 for, I forget her name, I'm, it's probably popping up somewhere around here right now. I... I won't be able to interview her because she has said on uh, record that she will only campaign in French. And now I I am not, uh, my French is not the best. I have grade 11 French and that's probably as far as I went. I can understand French, but I cannot speak the language. So I, I wish I could, but it just, let's put all the... Uh, Let's put all our cards on the table and I, I just won't be able to interview her because I will not be able to hold a conversation with her because I am an English speaker and she is only uh, campaigning in French. So God bless her if she thinks that that's a winning strategy. I think she potentially could. 
You did see another candidate in October of last year announce that she was going to run. Uh, this is, for, again, out in Nova Scotia. She is a former candidate as well, former provincial candidate. She said she was going to run. Earlier in February, she said, uh, no, I'm out. I can't do that anymore. Uh, she she has taken a pass at the leadership of the Green Party. So the Greens uh, have no one declared yet. They have no one who's actually on the table saying that they're going to run. But I could be wrong. As of record, as of this airing, there might be someone coming out of the woodworks and actually saying, hey, this is what I believe and this is why I believe I should be the next leader of the Green Party of Canada. I could be wrong, but I'm, I, I'm hedging my bets that the Green Party is going to hold off until some rules and... Uh, numbers are announced from the party uh so that is the green party of canada and now let's talk about the maverick party uh western canada's uh uh party uh they had they ran candidates in 32 to 36 of ridings last election from manitoba all the way to bc all the way all including all three territories they ran candidates in select ridings where they said we would not want to split the vote. We want the we want to challenge conservative strongholds so that way conservatives actually start addressing some of Western Canada's issues. They ended up with about one percent of the vote. That did not settle well with a lot of the candidates. And moments after the election was uh, uh, called for Justin Trudeau. The interim leader, the Honorable Jay Hill, former cabinet minister under Stephen Harper, announced that next election, whenever that be, being a minority government, we will run a candidate in all 107 ridings in Western Canada. So that's one candidate per riding from Manitoba to B.C., including the three territories. Now, that's significant for many reasons. Um with the rise of the populist movement that we see with the Freedom Convoy, we are seeing more and more people actually get into politics and get angry at the two mainstream, quote unquote, legacy parties, the conservatives and the liberals. Now, I'm expecting that more people are going to be looking at the PPC and the Maverick Party in the next election. Maybe not the PPC in Western Canada, but they did seem to get a lot of support out here. But the Maverick Party is getting a lot of attention these days. A lot of people are making comments about them. A lot of people are actually just openly talking about them on a regular basis. And we have one candidate who has already announced his intentions to seek the leadership. He is the former Peace River Westlock uh, candidate for the Maverick Party, uh, Colin uh, Krieger, if I, I apologize if I'm pronouncing that in, uh, incorrectly, he is expected to appear on the show here uh, when he gets back from Ottawa. So I'm looking forward to sitting down with him and talking about Maverick Party leadership and also the Freedom Convoy that went from BC all the way to uh, Ottawa. The Maverick Party is expected to name their new leader on May 14th. Uh, a date, a location for the leadership election is, has not been uh, selected yet. I've been following their website, following their social media feeds just to figure out when that is and where that is. Because if it's in Calgary, we will be there. We'll be probably trying to live stream from there. So I'm looking forward to potentially doing that. Maybe even if it's in Red Deer or even Saskatoon, uh, we will try that. So I am looking forward to covering that leadership race when it gets a little bit more closer to May 14th. But May 14th, the Maverick Party is going to be naming their first permanent leader. Because you have to remember, the Honorable Jay Hill was not their permanent leader. He was only interim leader for the last few years since the party was founded in early 2020. So this will be their first permanent leader. There is expected to be a few other candidates come out of the woodwork. You're seeing a few names, maybe the former candidate from Banff Airdrie, uh, maybe a few from actually here in uh, Calgary. So please stay tuned because every time that one announces, we will be covering it uh, for the show. So go to crossboardinterviews.ca. Uh, we have this whole giant news section for just uh, news about leadership races. So please go there and uh, tune in. Um, so those are the three major federal parties that are going through leadership races right now. The Conservative Party, the Green Party, and the Maverick Party. Uh, over the next few months, we will be carrying news about them, updating you on our social media feeds as things progress for those three parties. But as of right now, the only one that has set a date for the leadership is the Maverick Party, and that is May 14th of this year. 
So we'll be right back after this commercial break and we'll be talking about some of the provincial parties out in Atlantic Canada and their leadership races that are going on. Talk to you soon. Calgary, Edmonton, Vegreville, St. Albert, Drumheller, Medicine Hat, Fort McMurray, and Peace River. These are some of the communities this show has been heard in. By advertising with us, your advert will be heard by countless Albertans and Canadians. Visit the link in the show notes to advertise with us today. Now we're going to head over to Nova Scotia because there there's actually two leadership races that are taking place and they're kind of important because both parties have representation in the Legislative Assembly and both parties are kind of in disarray because of this leadership race. Tim Houston won the last uh, election of the Progressive Conservatives in uh, 2021 in August uh, and the Liberals and the NDP are both looking for leaders. Gary Burrell, the leader of the NDP, announced early on in November after uh, a few months that he would be stepping down as the leader of the party after a new leader was chosen. Now, he was going to stay on as leader, uh, as an M a a MLA, after a leader was chosen, but he was stepping down to give, uh, quote-unquote, fresh voices to those who are... Uh, the to the party. Now, the other party, the Nova Scotia Liberals, I, I wasn't expecting this. So in 2021, the party went through, the Liberals went through a leadership race where Ian Rankin was chosen as the leader and he was chosen as premier and he went into the uh, election as premier and he got defeated. I expected him to stay on due to the fact that he had just become leader and maybe he was going to be able to see some resurgence. But in early January, January 5th, if I'm not mistaken, he announced that, nope, after taking a few weeks off during the holidays, um, he was going to step down and potentially uh, uh, he's going to step down as leader and let the party choose a new person. And he was going to stay on as leader until that party person was chosen. Both parties have set dates. Now, they are very, they're coming up very quickly. June 25th, the NDP will be selecting a new leader. And currently, there's only one person who is running for that position. And that is Claudia Chender. She's the MLA for Dartmouth South. And she has been in that position since 2007. Now, she has two MLAs, two caucus, represent, uh, two caucus members, who currently have endorsed her. And they are potentially waiting for a second candidate to announce that they are running and that is Susie Hansen MLA for Halifax Needham she is expected to get into the race but right now as of recording this again everything's as of recording Claudia is the only one to have announced that she is running for the leadership of the NDP in Nova Scotia and that leadership race is going to be happening June 25th and the last day to register so Susie has some time to announce, but the last day to register is May 21st. So uh, we still got about two months away until the actual leadership race happens, uh, until the cutoff happens. So as of right now, Claudia is the only member who is actually running and has announced her intention. She actually announced on Valentine's Day. Uh, so look forward to that the other party like i said is the official opposition of the nova scotia liberals uh ian rankin announced on january 5th that he was uh, tendering his resignation of the liberal party of nova scotia and as of now literally as of yesterday uh, when this is recording uh on february 19th two candidates have announced that they are running for the leadership angela simmons and zach churchill zach churchill is the current deputy leader of the party and Angela is the, uh, just if I'm not mistaken, I'm just going to correct this here. Uh, she just got elected for the MLA for Preston in the last general election. She is currently serving as deputy speaker. I'm not sure if she has had to step down from that, but she's serving as deputy speaker of the Nova Scotia House of Assembly. Uh, she's the opposition critic for justice. And uh, Zach is the opposition member. He served, sorry, under Ian Rankin and Stephen McNeil as Minister of Health and Wellness, Natural Resources, Municipal Affairs, Communications, Nova Scotia, Education, and Early Childhood Development. 
and he was the critic for health and wellness under uh, as since the last election now both of them have picked up a lot of support from their caucus members uh, they have 17 mh M mlas uh churchill has uh one two three four five currently if you want to head over and see who they actually are head over to crossboardinterviews.ca go into the news section there's a leadership tab where we are digesting and finding out who's endorsing who because as much as you don't want to follow uh wikipedia because i do not trust it because anyone can edit whatever they want we are trying to make sure that we are putting it out there in a reliable way that you know exactly what we know because we're searching the internet high and low through social media posts that these are the endorsements that have happened. Now, the Liberal Party, like I said, will be taking place, the Liberal leadership will be taking place on July 9th. Uh, I have not heard anything that has come out saying that there's a potentially new candidate that's going to be putting their uh, name forward. Uh, there is speculation that there is, but I haven't been able to find out who names or potentially uh, personalities who are putting their names forward. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this race because this is going to be uh, setting up for the next Nova Scotia election where whoever the leader is is going to go up against Zach Houston. Uh, Churchill said during his uh, leadership announcement that the Liberals are the first party to ever defeat a one-term majority government. So in 2009, the NDP were elected to a majority government under Daryl Dexter. In 2013, though, the Liberals turfed them after four years. And this had been the first time a party had done that in Nova Scotia's history. Never, ever had it happened where a one-term government was only a one-term government uh, after securing a majority government. So he is holding on hope that he can do it to Tim Houston in the next election. Angela is uh, coming out as saying, I'm the new fresh face. I'm, I'm looking to uh, renew the party. And I, I don't have baggage from McNeil. I don't have baggage from Rankin. So I am the person that you want. So these are the two candidates that I put their name forward. I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens there. Again, follow along on crossboardinterviews.ca and we will be covering this these leadership races as they unfold. And if we can, if we can, we might even send someone out to Nova Scotia to cover those two leadership races when they happen, if we can come up with the money and we can get some enough backing. So please tune in, stay, stay safe. Um, we're we're going to take another quick break. I'm just, I'm just chopping this up so that way I can keep track and make sure I have all my notes here. Uh, we'll be right back and we're going to be talking about uh, the other three races in Atlantic Canada and then we're going to be coming closer to home with Alberta and Saskatchewan. So be right back. Calgary, Edmonton, Vegreville, St. Albert, Drumheller, Medicine Hat, Fort McMurray, and Peace River. These are some of the communities this show has been heard in. By advertising with us, your advert will be heard by countless Albertans and Canadians. Visit the link in the show notes to advertise with us today. Okay, uh, three last ones from Atlantic Canada, then we're going to come back here to Western Canada to talk about two leadership races that are happening here in Western Canada. But the last three I want to talk about, and we're going to do them very quickly because I, I see that the time is creeping up here. Um, in Prince Edward Island, the New Democrats uh, are uh, looking for a new leader. Their actual leadership race is going to be taking place in April. And right now, the former leader, I just want to make sure I get the name, Joe Bryan, PEI leader, announced in 2020 he was stepping down. They did not fill the position. The NDP have, uh, have not held a seat in the legislature for a while now. And Joe Bryan said, no, I'm done after the last election. And since then, the PEI NDP have been leaderless. They have not uh, appointed an interim leader, nothing. Uh, and this is uh, going to be the first time that they have a permanent leader in almost relatively two years of leaderless uh, politics for Pierre and Edward Island's New Democrats. So that's going to be taking place in April. Follow along on crossboardinterviews.ca. We'll be covering the live results as they come in. Uh, the other two uh, leadership races that are happening in 
Atlantic Canada, is in Newfoundland. Actually, both are happening in Newfoundland. Uh, Alison Coffin, uh, NDP, le uh, NDP leader for the Newfoundland and Labrador uh, Party, announced that she was stepping down after a dismal result where she lost her seat in the last provincial election there. And Chess Crosby, the Newfoundland and Labrador P Prince Edward, sorry, Progressive Conservatives, announced after he lost his seat as well that he was not going to be running for re-election. So in the last election, the Liberals went from a minority government to a slim majority government, and both Chess Crosby and Alison Coffin both lost their party's uh, uh, seat, which resulted in a reduction of seats. So the NDPA prior to the election had three. The, prior to the election, the party for the Progressive Conservatives had 14. After the election, they had two for the NDP and 13 for the Progressive Conservatives. Chess Crosby and Alison Coffin both lost their seats. Now, uh, the PCs have not announced any details about what the party is going to look like, where the leadership race is going, when it's going to be, how much it's going to cost. So we're still waiting on details there. The NDP have also not announced. So literally, they are both with interim leaders right now, both in the both sitting ML, M, MHAs, members of the House Assembly, are currently interim leaders so those two will be happening probably this year if not early next year because they do have a leadership uh, elections coming up here soon so i'm assuming they're going to want to have someone in place before those leadership races happen so those three parties are currently again i don't know what's happening in politics here and you're, i think you're getting the idea of what i'm getting at what's happening to politics does nobody want to become leader anymore? We are seeing people who have powers want to become it, but you don't see the John Turner versus Pierre Trudeau's anymore. Uh, Angela Simmons and Zach Churchill from the Nova Scotia Liberals. I don't see them as power players in uh, Nova Scotia politics. I could be wrong, but I just like... Atlantic Canada is going through this very identity crisis of what's going on in provincial politics. And I'm here for it because I'm excited to see what's going on. But I'm also excited to see where the parties go from here. Because usually with a new leader, they rebrand themselves. They bring themselves to the center, left, right, however they want. But if the leaders of the parties of the, I'm going to say this, I'm going to try and get this right here. Nova Scotia Liberals, Nova Scotia New Democrats, uh, uh, Prince Edward Island New, uh, NDP, Newfoundland PCs, and Newfoundland uh, P, uh, NDP, they all have some major uh, things going for them. I almost forgot. I literally had it written down, and I forgot to mention this, but I'm going to do it now. There's another party that's actually going through a leadership race right now, and it is getting interesting. There is, if I'm not mistaken, at this current point of time, five candidates to lead the New Brunswick Liberal Party. So New Brunswick Liberals under Kevin Vicker were turf uh, from whatever semblance of potential governing again. And they were reduced to the northern half of New Brunswick. If you live in New Brunswick, you know what I'm about to say. Uh, relatively closer to the closer you get to Quebec, the more French speaking you get. The, the relatively lower on the uh, the province you go southern part of it Fredericton you get more of the English speaking so in the last election you saw a very French English divide you saw the liberals pick up a lot of seats if not all of the seats in northern uh, New Brunswick and you saw a lot of the progressive conservatives and the Greens and the People's Alliance which is basically the People's Party of Canada but for New Brunswick pick up the bottom half now Kevin Vicker announced relatively like a week after that election, he was stepping down. He did not win his seat. The He lost to the People's Alliance Party uh, in his riding in northern uh, New Brunswick. So like I said, almost all the seats, but not all. And Kevin Vicker announced that he was stepping back. He was no longer going to be the leader. A new interim leader was chosen. And candidate after candidate after candidate has announced their intentions to seek the leadership. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I'm just going to make sure I get this right here. Uh, five candidates? I'm just checking my notes here. Uh, I should have got this ready. I apologize, everyone. Leadership elections. Again, I go onto our website. It's all there. We, we've tried to digest it as much as possible. So since the... 
Uh, since Kevin Vickers announced his resignation, resignation on September 14th, 2020, one, two, three, four, five candidates have announced their intentions to uh, seek uh, that leadership. Don Arsenault announced in October 18th, 2018, he was the former MLA for the in Alberta in New Brunswick. Uh, T.J. Harvey, former member of Parliament, Liberal member of Parliament from 2015 to 2019, announced. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was relatively the first to announce that he was going to run for the leadership. Uh, Seamus Brin, uh, businessman in New Brunswick, announced that he was going to run for the leadership as well. Susan Holt. I want to talk about her for a second because I find her story quite, 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 quite interesting. The Liberal Party has never had a woman run for their leadership. All other parties in uh, New Brunswick have. But the Liberals have not. Susan Holt is the former, uh, I, I want to say policy analyst, but a former staffer to Premier Brian Gallant, who lost uh, the, the premiership to now in, uh, incumbent Blaine Higgs. Susan Holt ran in the last election. She lost. But she is running for the leadership. And now her, her candidacy is quite important because she is the first woman to run for the leadership of the Liberals in New Brunswick. Never happened before, so it's quite interesting. Now, the last one I want to talk about here for a second is Robert Robert Gavan. Robert Gavan is quite the interesting fellow. He was first elected as a progressive conservative in Blaine Higgs' government back when they turfed Brian Gallant from power. Now, Robert is well-known and well-respected. He was a health advisor for one of the major hospitals out there. And he, if I'm not mistaken, and quote me if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, people, uh, Gavit G Gavin, I apologize if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, he switched the, he's, he left the PCs because of some health issues that were going on. And they were closing down hospitals. They were consolidating some of the hospital emergency rooms. And he said, nope, I can't stand it. He left the governing PCs. He became an independent. And then he joined the Liberals under Kevin Vicker. And he won in the next election. Now, he ran in a different riding. And he ran in a quote-unquote safe liberal riding in uh, New Brunswick. But it was quite interesting to see a progressive conservative who ran under Blaine Higgs, get elected, switch to the NDP, win as a, switch to the Liberals, sorry, win as a Liberal, and now he is running to lead the Liberals against Blaine Higgs. Now, I, I don't have a pulse on what's happening in New Brunswick, and I, I do not try to say that I do, but I would be interested to see if the Liberal members, the, the card-carrying members, actually support him. Because... He has the resume for someone who has the background in the health industry, health sector, sorry. You would assume post-pandemic, pandemic, you would want to potentially have someone like that. This is a wide open field and I'm, I'm, I'm actually really excited. I'm so pissed off that I, I forgot about it. So I do apologize for that for a second. But these five candidates, and here's the thing. They're expecting more people to potentially put their name for for this leadership race as well. So the Liberals are seeing a potential win here because maybe after seven years, the New Brunswick population is getting a little uh, wary of Blaine Higgs. I don't know. But when you have a large open field where a lot of candidates are putting their name forward, it means that people are ready for change. And people know that when they're ready for change, you have a better shot of becoming premier or the MP or MLA if the change is there and the atmosphere on the ground is there. With five there, I think the atmosphere is ready. And I think Blaine Higgs is in for a uh, rude awakening in the next, the next election. So we will see what happens. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we will be right back after a quick uh, break and we'll be talking about the last two leadership elections that are happening here in Canada. And that is in Saskatchewan and here in our home province of Alberta. Talk to you soon.
We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. Okay, we are back for the last two leadership races that are happening here in Canada, unless by for unforeseen circumstances, somebody announces that they are no longer leader of their party. They step down. But as of right now, as of right now, the last two leadership elections that are happening here in Canada, one in Saskatchewan, one in Alberta. I want to talk about Saskatchewan first because we always leave our home province to last. Uh, the Saskatchewan NDP under Ryan Miley has... Uh, relatively being a dud I'm, I'm i'm not trying to be rude i'm just trying to put it as politely as possible the party elected him in 2018 and he was the leader running into the uh 2020 election now the 2020 election was expected to be a, a, a an election where the ndp were able to pick up some seats they didn't. They literally did not pick up one seat. They actually lost strongholds. They did pick up some seats. They didn't pick up seats in the sense that they gained seats in the legislature. They picked up seats, but they lost safe seats in Saskatoon. So they there was a lot of internal issues going on with the Saskatchewan NDP. But the biggest one came just earlier in February this month when the party after holding the seat since 1998, lost the riding of Athabasca in the by-election that happened up there. Uh, Bucky Belanger, the NDP MLA, former Liberal MLA from 1995 to 1998, before he floor crossed to the party, uh, announced that he was stepping down to run federally for the Liberals in the, the northern riding of Saskatchewan. This was expected to be a very easy pickup for the uh, NDP. They had a former NDP MP, well-liked mayor of Lakosh, running for the uh, nomination. They had a government who had never held a northern riding in the province ever since the party came to power in 2010. So this was expected to be a very, very quick pickup for the NDP. And it looked that way going into the election night. On election night, they had about 31 of 37 polls reporting, and the, the NDP were well out ahead. But something happened. Results started coming in, and the party actually lost the riding to the Saskatchewan party governing under Scott Moe. This is a humiliating defeat for Ryan Miley. That was Tuesday. By Friday morning at 11 o'clock, Ryan Miley in Saskatoon in his uh, riding office uh, announced that he was no longer uh, comfortable le leading the party. And as he said, he took a walk in the snow with his dog during the, during the last few weeks and he thought to himself, it's time for a fresh voice. Now, I say fresh voice because I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes. But since then... We have seen candidate after candidate come out and say, we don't want the leadership. It is too much. The party is uh, in shambles right now, but we do not want it. Uh, Trent Witherspoon, the uh, former runner up to Ryan in the 2018 leadership, the third place winner in the 2013 leadership, announced that he was not seeking it. The mayor of Saskatoon announced that he was not see seeking it, seeing as someone who's been essentially more, uh, the party was more aligned to him than the Sask party. And the only person who has so far said anything about it is Saskatoon MLA, Betty Nisipi. I, I apologize if I pronounced that last name wrong. She is the only Indigenous woman uh, elected to the Legislative Assembly in Regina. And she said she is considering it, but she doesn't know about the uh, systematic racism that is in Saskatoon, uh, Saskatchewan if a strong, independent voice like hers would be able to win over the hearts and minds of Saskatchewanians. So this is going to be an interesting race to watch because the Saskatchewan NDP, you have to remember, were once the natural governing party of the uh, Prairie Province. 
They had from all of the 90s were the NDP. Tommy Douglas was the NDP leader, CCF. So if the NDP are failing in the home province of Saskatchewan, I would be very shocked to see if they actually survive. And maybe we're moving from a two-party system in Saskatchewan to a one-party system because Scott Moe seems to be uh, uh, doing himself favors every time that he talks because it seems to have people from all across Canada rallying around him and saying, yep, we like this guy. So I would be very surprised if uh, uh, the next leader of the NDP is not the next premier because Scott Moe is going to continue doing uh, did that makes sense. That didn't make sense. I would be surprised if the NDP leadership race doesn't have a lot of people running for it because Scott Moe is still well liked. Uh, polls are closing, but overall I don't think Scott Moe has anything to worry about. I don't think the NDP are keeping him up at night. The last one I want to talk about the last leadership race I want to talk about is here in the, our home province, Wild Rose Country, the leader of leadership race of the Alberta Liberals. Now, the Alberta Liberals were once the governing party of this province, let alone this was 1930s, and that was the last time they had ever uh, potentially formed government. Uh, in 2004, they were expected to win, but they did not. But the Alberta Liberals have been in disarray. And if you listen to our interview with Dave T uh, Taylor, former MLA for Calgary Curry, he said it best. Since Kevin Taft, the party's been going downhill and the leadership after David Kahn left it has been in shambles. We have not seen uh, their interim leader come out and give a press conference. We have not seen the Liberals try to make news. I've reached out to them on numerous occasions to have them on my show. We've had the Green Party leader. We've had the uh, Communist leader. We've had the Alberta Party liber leader. But we've reached out twice to the Alberta Liberals. And they have not uh, extended uh, an olive branch to say, yeah, we'll come on. And I'm shocked at that. Because you think any news is good news and any PR is good news. But... Here we are. They're still in their trenches and they have yet to name a leadership race. Now, earlier in January, they did announce via a John talk. John is the name of the interim leader that they're excited to announce that they're looking at potentially holding the leadership race early in 2022. Okay. If you're excited to announce that you're looking at potentially having a leadership race in early 2022, why not just announce it? Just announce it. I'm assuming you know the details. Just pull the plug and announce it. I, I, I'm hoping to have leadership candidates from the Liberal Party on the show. I'm looking forward to having them on my show. But if they don't announce, they like we are in the red zone. David Kanye said it best. We are in the red zone of Alberta politics right now. We are literally year and a bit away from the next general election provincially here in the province of Alberta. And if the Liberals don't get their act together, maybe they're okay with sitting out the next few years in, uh, 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 like, just out of, out of the, in the wilderness. Because I don't see how the party is going to survive. We have, they have a leader, they have a candidate up in the Fort McMurray lac Bish by-election. But really... What's going on here, guys? Like, shake your head. Let, let's get it, get our act together and actually put a, a strong message forward and put a leader to, leader to forward. If not, the party, the longer the party has no leader, especially in Alberta, if the longer the party has no leader, the worse it's going to be in the next election to try and recruit 87 candidates, get people to support you, and get people to back you financially. The party has been fundraising, and it's not looking good. But that's here nor there. So I will be covering this and all the other leadership races over the next few months on the crossboardinterviews.ca. Go there, click on the news section, look for the leadership link, and all of them will be there. We'll be trying to keep it up to date as quickly as possible. But I, I, I talk about this for the this 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 reason only. Our politics is divided. 
when we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven leadership races that are happening in 2022, it makes me wonder where have our political leaders gone? I I can't remember a year where we saw. 11 leadership races in one year across this province. And I've been following politics for a relatively long time. 11 leadership races across this province in a year. We have 11 interim leaders or no leaders of all in some of these leadership, in, in some of these parties. Is political leadership dead? I, I ask that question for only one reason. I ask that question to get some feedback here because I want to hear from you. And the reason I do this and the reason I say that is because we want to start doing these on a regular basis. Not they're not like I said, they're not gonna be once a month, they're gonna be on a semi-regular basis or maybe maybe like one off from time to time, where we're gonna be talking about talk about just you and me, me, the microphone and the camera talking about some of the biggest issues that are happening here in Canada and even potentially around the world. But I want to start off with this. What do you think about the leadership uh, races that are happening across this province? Do you see our leader, our political leadership dying out? Do you see people not wanting to take up the mantle of the leadership of parties anymore? What's your thoughts? Send us a message. Go to acrossborderinterviews.ca. There'll be a new link on there that says give feedback where you can tell us what you're thinking. I, I really hope you do give us your feedback because I want to know from you, the people. And we'll be talking about this throughout the next month and we we'll, might be bringing it up from time to time uh, throughout the next month and do a little segment from here, here or there, your feedback. But I want to know from you right here, right now. What's your thoughts on the leaderships of this uh, of Canada, the political leadership? Are we doomed to be in a perpetual state of elections? Are we doomed to have a perpetual state of interim leaders of party if you do not win an election? Are we in a moment of clarity where people are saying enough is enough? We don't care about politics anymore. We can make more money in the private sector. Where has the political leadership gone? And I, I hope that we can find it. But until then, my name is Christopher Brown. This has been the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, get out from behind the camera. Get out from behind the desk. Get out from behind Twitter. Have a conversation with somebody. And just talk. Stop fighting. Have a conversation. Because that's what we need as a society. And that's what we need as a country. Talk to you later.